that. Yeah. They know that you're fine if you're on uphill. It's if you're out in the on a glacier and you're waving. Oh, there's Kelly. All right, I'm back. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you, Kelly. Okay. So, why do we not have... It's not on there. Well, we might gather close since there's only four of us. Um, my screen looks different. I have I have Antarctica on that screen. Um, you guys want to bring chairs up close? If there's only a few of you, this will work just fine. So you want to come right up in here now that I'm in your way? hear you. Actually, you can stand here with me too, because, yeah. Welcome everyone, we're gonna get started. It looks like Wasilla can hear everybody and Juno can hear everybody and Antarctica's not the technology issue right now, it's Anchorage. Oh, well, we're, welcome from Antarctica. So, uh, my name is Kelly Fitzgerald. I work at the Girl Scout office and I have contacted my friend Rebecca in Antarctica and she has helped us coordinate a really cool <laughs> program where girls get to learn about women in Antarctica and we're excited that everybody is here today. I have disabled the video for everybody um, except for Antarctica um, so that they have the best connection they can get. Um, but I will leave my chat up so if anybody is having problems hearing or has questions, um, please feel free to type into the chat um, and we can help you out from there. Um, so for now we're going to start by moving to Elaine and she is going to do the introduction from Antarctica. So welcome. Thank you, Kelly. Yes, my name is Elaine and I was a brownie. I was thinking I should find my photo of when I was in my brownie uniform. It's an old photo because I'm an old lady, but I love the Girl Scout program. And I'm going to talk a little bit and then Rebecca is going to talk a little bit. And our friend Carol is going to talk a little bit. There we go. Okay, so there's three awesome ladies here. And we're going to tell you what it's like to live and work in Antarctica. I'm in front of McMurdo Station, which has about a thousand people in it. And it's the largest village on this entire continent. A thousand people is the biggest city and nobody lives here all the time. We just come down here for a few months to help scientists and that's what I'm going to tell you about. So I have a few pictures I want to show you. So I'm going to ask Kelly to bring up a PowerPoint to show you some pictures and I'm going to talk about what it's like in Antarctica and then I'm 
going to turn it over to Carol and Rebecca, and then you'll be able to ask us some questions. All right, give me just one second and we'll switch over to the PowerPoint. You guys are probably really smart and you probably know everything about Antarctica every, er, already, but let's pretend some of you don't know everything already. All right. Um, can, let's see. Oh, we got to share it with you. One second. All right, you should be good to go. Okay, yes, I can see it. So women who work at the bottom of the world. We have men who work here too, but today I'm going to tell you about the awesome women that we work with. It's being slow. There we go. Here's a picture of me on a ship when I was looking at whales and I was going to Antarctica about a year ago. I want you to think about coming to work with me in Antarctica when you grow up. You have to be 18 years old, but when you graduate from high school, I want you to seriously think about coming down here. Where's Antarctica? Well, you guys live in the Arctic, in Alaska, and we are in Antarctica at the bottom of the world, the opposite side. As you know, there's polar bears in the Arctic and there's no penguins. And where we live in Antarctica, at the bottom of the world, there's penguins and no polar bears. We've seen a lot of penguins recently here, lots of them. Antarctica is huge. It's bigger than the 48 contiguous states. And if we compared it to Alaska, and Alaska's the biggest state, as you know, but we could fit Alaska five times inside of Antarctica. So it's a big place, but there's not very many people in Antarctica. And the biggest town is right here in McMurdo, where we are. Antarctica is covered with ice, and under all that ice are mountains. If all that ice melted, there would be mountains underneath of it that we can't even see some of those mountains. Antarctica is the highest, driest, coldest, windiest continent on Earth. And scientists come down here to study things that they can't find in other places. For example, penguins. This is where scientists come to study penguins. And we have a lot of penguins here right now. They study glaciers. We have lots of glaciers. Ice shells. The Antarctic Ocean is huge and they like to study that. Scientists like to study volcanoes. We have a volcano here that's constantly erupting called Mount Erebus. And there's three US stations or it's villages in Antarctica, Palmer, South Pole, and McMurdo. Other countries have stations here too, like the Italians and the French and the English and the Chinese and the Russians. But the United States has three of them. And where we're at today is McMurdo Station, the biggest one on the whole continent. And this is a photo of it. And that's kind of what you were seeing behind me. See that hill on the right side in the upper right corner? That's where we're on top of that hill right now, looking down at the station. Sorry, we had some extras join us here in Anchorage. That's fine. 
So I want you to think about coming to Antarctica and working here. And you can either be a scientist or you can be something like Carol and Rebecca and me. We're not scientists. We're here to help the scientists get their jobs done. So let's look at some of these. Some of these people, some of our friends. So Anne and Amy are scientists who study giant sea spiders. And Heather is a scientist who studies seals. Tracy and Elizabeth study climate change by looking at ice cores. Kirsten and Michelle are scientists who dive under the ice and that water is freezing when they go into the water. Woo Zoe is an engineer who's a world's expert on crevasses and crevasses are big holes in the ground and if we fall into a crevasse we'll die so Zoe helps us find them and she's an engineer. So those are some of the scientists and engineers but other people help the scientists get their jobs done. So like Christina helps put fuel in buildings Terry flies in helicopters to the tops of mountains and puts up antennas so we can use radios to communicate with each other. Robin works at field camps and she melts ice for drinking water. Angie drives a forklift to move equipment. Shelly helps set up tents for scientists to sleep in. Beej is the one that gives the scientists their camping equipment like tents and sleeping bags and camp stoves. Shannon helps teach the people how to drive snowmobiles and how to repair the snowmobiles. And Rachel is the boss of a campsite, making sure everything goes okay when people are camping. And then we have Carol, who you're gonna meet in a couple minutes, and Carol is a weather observer. Carol launches a weather balloon twice a day. And she has a box attached to that weather balloon. Do you see how she wrote, hello, Girl Scouts? That was for you guys. She dedicated that to you. And that box and that balloon go way up in the sky. And she's gonna tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. And it goes way up into the stratosphere. And then after Carol, you're gonna meet Rebecca, who's a pharmacist, works at our pharmacy here. The pharmacy's in the medical clinic where the doctors and the nurses are. There's Rebecca in her pharmacy. You can see all the pills and bottles on the shelf there. And she works with an awesome team of doctors, Dr. Julie and Nurse Marissa, a lot of awesome women in the clinic. Here's Rebecca at the South Pole, and that's not a real dog with Rebecca. She'll tell you about her dog. That's not a real one though. And here she is having fun with her friends on a sled, and Rebecca's gonna tell you about these pictures. And what are all these women doing on this sled? She's gonna tell you about that. So think about coming to Antarctica to work with us when you turn 18. You can come down and be a scientist. You can come down and help with, you know, be a plumber, a carpenter, a forklift driver, a nurse, a doctor, a weather observer. There's so many awesome jobs that you can have down here. So with that, I'm going to have Rebecca come over here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to have Carol come over here. I'm going to give her my headset and microphone, and she's going to talk about being a weather observer. Um, I guess this should go on my ears. Right? Yep. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Um, just give me one second. I'm figuring out how to get back to the big screen. Not sure. Going back to the big screen. Okay, girls, you gotta come gather close because I don't know how to get this piece up there. So come have a seat. We can bring in more chairs. Come gather close. 
somehow the PowerPoint works on the big screen, but your picture doesn't. So we're just gathering close in Anchorage and we'll be ready in a sec. Come gather close. Raj. <laughs> You want to sit on the floor? You can sit on the floor in the front. I'm sorry the big screen isn't working today. So if you can't see this screen, come on close. Technical difficulties, please hold. <laughs> we can move the tables away too. All right, you guys are good to go. Okay, uh, well I'm here, I guess I'm one of the weather observers down here at McMurdo. Uh, weather here, just like in Alaska, it's very important for any kind of a job. You obviously don't want to do your job outside if there's going to be a blizzard, for instance. And it's uh, pretty important to be able to help uh, forecast that, too. If we have an airplane actually on its way south right now, in fact, you might see it uh, come in behind us, coming in from New Zealand. It's about a nine-hour flight. So <laughs> we had to be able to give him a very accurate forecast. And that's where our weather balloons come in. Uh, we launch those twice a day. Uh, there's about seven to 10 other stations on Antarctica that launch them as well. And they all help the forecasters figure out what's going on above the surface. So it kind of tells them where maybe some of the weather is going to be coming from or moving to. Uh, it helps them figure out, for instance, that they can tell this plane before he takes off in New Zealand that, yes, nine hours from now, it's going to be fine for you to land because there's not too many other places for him to land down here. In fact, there aren't any other places for him to land down here. So if he takes off and gets here and it's a whiteout, uh, he's, he's going to have to put down in a very, very nasty weather situation and he could crash and we don't want that. <laughs> So that's where the balloons and the weather folks kind of come in, is uh, we make sure that doesn't happen. And they have weather folks as well out at all those field camps, out at all the science camps where they pull the ice cores because they have to fly planes or helicopters in and out of those. Uh, we also have them here in town. Uh, don't know if you can see it, but uh, kind of behind us we have a cargo ship that's offloading and we have to be able to let them know if it's going to be too windy to safely use their cranes. They're picking up uh, containers which are basically like a semi-trailer and you don't want that being picked up if it's a, a big hurricane blizzard or something outside uh, whooping around. You could drop that on somebody or something and that wouldn't be very very good. <laughs> so that's a uh, some of the things that the weather people do here. Uh, temperature right now, we've got some weather instruments with us, but uh, it's right at freezing. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's a little bit windy, about uh, 10 miles an hour. It gives us about a 22 degree wind chill. And that's another thing, thanks Elaine, that we do here as the weather folks is we let people know what the temperature is and what the wind chill is because if it gets too cold they're not going to want to have too many people doing outside jobs for long periods of time uh, you're not going to be having your construction for instance if it's 75 degrees below zero <laughs> which you've probably seen in alaska mm -hmm. yeah and th this is midsummer for us too so this is a nice summer day right at freezing <laughs> Um, you can also see we're very bright. It will look like this 12 hours from now at 2 a.m. And that's uh, actually something that some of the weather folks do factor in is where the sun is in the sky. We get asked that a lot by the scientists when the sunrise and sunset are because they need to know that for whatever science they're doing. And it also factors in on our weather satellites. But uh, some of the scientists here have jobs that are better done. Uh, they'll come down in the, the fall and they want to be in the dark. So when is it going to be dark enough for us to do our job? <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so does anybody have questions for Carol? You can type those into the chat and I can read those off for her. So if 
people in other locations besides Anchorage have questions, feel free to type them in the chat. And Anchorage, anybody have questions about the weather in Antarctica? What is your question? What about the food? I'm going to have you save that question because I think Rebecca can answer that one maybe a little better. Any questions about the weather in Antarctica? Yeah. So the question from Anchorage was, does it get below zero? Uh, yes. Yes, it does. Uh, zero, both zero Celsius and zero Fahrenheit. In fact, today we're right at zero Fahrenheit. <laughs> we'll probably go below later in the day. <laughs> awesome. We had another zero Celsius. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had another question in the chat that says, why isn't it snowy? Why is it not snowy? Uh, you you actually just got very lucky that today's not snowy. They are looking for it to be snowy tomorrow. There's a low pressure system that is probably going to give us some snow showers tomorrow afternoon. Mountains have not much snow behind you. So, is do the mountains behind you often have snow? Uh, the ones behind me, more so uh, in the winter, especially, uh, you can see them, they're, they're got just leftovers right now, but in the winter, they will be white in color, and you can actually see them on the webcams as well. I don't know, Rebecca will tell you about those, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, girls in Wasilla want to know how global warming is affecting Antarctica. Oh my, that, that is a very big question. Uh, <laughs> there is a, a lot about that, that uh, that would be a very long answer, how global warming affects Antarctica. I know uh, that very much Dr. Uh, Priskew with long-term ecological has a lot on that, as well as the Thwaites projects. The glaciers are melting and the sea level is rising and uh, the sea level, the sea temperature is rising in some places as well. And that's been confirmed with uh, the buoys and things that the scientists deploy as they study. That's one of the things that when Elaine was saying they study the oceans, that is one of the things they'll study is uh, the sea temperatures as well as how that affects the creatures that live in the sea. All right, we have a question in Anchorage. I don't know if you're the best person to answer this, but the question is, where do you guys get your food from? Well, uh, that, that might actually be a better question for Elaine. Let me uh, ask her. This is uh, not a weather question at all, but Anchorage really wants to know where we get our food from. I know it's not, you know, locally sourced. <laughs> the penguins are safe. Hang on, let me pass this back. <laughs> that is an excellent question. So let me just tell you, we have a ship down there and you can hardly see the ship. It's by those big four brown buildings off over there with the big crane. That ship has just arrived yesterday and it is bringing one year's supply of food for us. We have to order every meal, breakfast, lunch, and supper for 365 days, we have to plan the menu and order all the food a year ago to be put on the ship that just arrived yesterday and it's going to be put into warehouses and freezers and for the next year, that's the food we're gonna eat. We buy it all in the United States and we ship it from California down here. It's amazing. Also on that ship is everything we need for the next year. Think about, I mean, toilet paper. All the toilet paper for a thousand people for a year. Uh, ink pens, paper, uh, cans of soup, medicine, uh, tractors. Uh, everything we are going to need is on that ship. And we have to order it. We order it like in uh, June, July, August, and then it gets put on the ship in California about Christmas time, and then it just has arrived. Oh, they said the plane is coming. I don't think you're going to be able to see it very easily, but if there's a look, can you see what looks like a bird off in the distance over there? Mm, not um, 
Yeah, well, it's it's a plane coming in, and we only get a plane a couple times a week from New Zealand, and so it's always pretty exciting when we get one in. We're pretty isolated down here. So Carol was right. They gave a good weather forecast, so the 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 pilot knew to come in today. That's that's good news for us. So anyway, what I was saying, whoever asked that question asked a really good question because we don't have any grocery stores down here. We don't have any office depots. We don't have any McDonald's. We have nothing like that. We have one cafeteria for a thousand people to eat in, like a school cafeteria. And we have cooks who cook all the food for us, but all they plan all the meals, they do the dishes, they do all of that. It's, it's pretty amazing. That was a great question. So I think I think I'll put uh, Rebecca on now. She's our pharmacist, and so let me hand this to her. I think. All right. Can you guys hear me? Uh, it's just summer, like. Hey. Hey from Antarctica. <laughs> um, my name is Rebecca. I'm a friend of Kelly's and Kelly asked me to get this together with the help of Elaine and Carol so that we could talk to you from Antarctica. Um, no one ever told me that I could come to Antarctica and work when I was growing up. So I think it's awesome that there are lots of women down here. Um, and I want more women to know that you can come down here and either be a scientist or come and help the scientists do their jobs. I've learned so much from all the scientists and other wonderful women I've worked with down here. Um, and just so you guys know, I lived in Alaska too. Um, I lived uh, in Anchorage for seven years. And I've also been to, I've been to Wasilla. I've been to Valdez. Love climbing your waterfalls in the winter. Um, I also worked in Bethel and Dillingham before I came down here. So, and my job here is I work in the medical clinic. I'm a pharmacist and I dispense people's medications and I do the same job uh, back in Alaska when I'm home there. Um, so first off, I wanted to show you guys a tour around station. Um, Elaine, can I make the screen bigger so I can see what they can see? Mm -hmm. If not, so long as they can see. Rebecca, while you're um, working on that, we had another question from uh, Valdez that said, what do your house okay. look like? Uh, so I think you're gonna share that in a minute. And also, how long will the balloon stay in the air that Girl Scouts was written on? Awesome, yeah, I'll step out of the, that's fine. Um, but one more before I step out of screen, another question that we got that maybe Carol could answer was how long do the balloons stay in the air for? So Carol says that they stay in the air for about an hour to an hour and a half. And then what happens? Do they pop? Then they pop. <laughs> there we go. Cool. And then they can tell when it has popped and it's not recording data because the little transmitter it has on it drops. And it tells a satellite that, which then communicates back to us at McMurdo. All right, so I'm gonna step off screen so you guys can see a little bit more of town. I'm gonna to point out a few things and Kelly, just tell me if, um, if our image isn't clear enough for you to see what I'm talking about, okay? But I'm also gonna show you guys where we live, where we eat, where we work, all, all sorts of cool stuff. So, do you guys see the big blue building in the center of town? So that's our hub for everything. The building number is 155, which is very unexciting and uncreative, um, but that is where our cafeteria is, uh, which is very important because it's basically the only place that we get to eat in town. Um, some people live in 155. We have dorm rooms. It's almost like going to summer camp or to college. Uh, we live in dorms and we have roommates. Um, some people work in 155. Some of the offices are in 155 for people who have indoor jobs. Uh, so that is kind of the center of our town. The next building closest to us from the blue building has a red roof and white sides. Do you guys see that one? Red roof and white sides. Oh, yep. It's 
<laughs> so that one is the medical clinic and that's where I work. Uh, it's very small, um, but it is the only place on station where people could get medications um, or if they need anything more than first aid, they come and see us. And we even have a dentist right now. We have uh, three nurses. I think we have five doctors. Um, so lots of people get to come down and help make sure that we all stay healthy and can do our jobs, um, even though it is a small facility. And then between us and the medical building is a brown and white building. Do you guys see that one? Uh, yep, I think- Kind of a brown, yep, brown building with a white roof and kind of looks like it has white stripes. That one is the firehouse. So we have firefighters that come down here and work in Antarctica. Some are men, but some are also women. Um, and it's a pretty important job because Antarctica is actually a very dry continent. Even though we have snow, we don't get any rain here and we don't get snow very often. So if there were a fire to happen in town, it could get pretty out of hand pretty fast. So they make sure that we all stay safe. They also drive the fire truck and they drive the ambulance if anyone needs help getting to the medical clinic. Um, if you start moving left from the blue, the red, and the brown buildings. Uh, there's a tan building to the left that kind of looks like it has three levels to it. Do you see that one? It might look tan or it might look white. Do you see that one? I think so, yeah. So that one is called the Crary Science Lab. And a lot of scientists do their job in that building. Um, some scientists are able to go to the field and then bring specimens or information back to the lab and work on them there in a nice warm environment where they can sleep in their own beds at night. Um, they have a little aquarium in there. They have an ice core sample from drilling down into a glacier that they've brought back to study. They have rocks that they've brought back to study about the, um, the mountains and volcanoes that are underneath the glaciers in Antarctica. Uh, so there is definitely a lot of cool stuff going on there. And on Sundays, they give tours so that us, those of us who aren't scientists can go and learn about what researchers and scientists are doing in Antarctica. Um, hey, Rebecca, behind the question. building. Can, can I yeah, what's up? So Angel from Providence wants to know if there are pharmacy techs down there um, as mm -hmm. well as a pharmacist. Actually, that is an awesome question because I am a pharmacist back in the U.S., but my job down here is to be a pharmacy technician. So what they really want is someone who will manage the inventory very well because it's very hard to get medications down here. We only get medication orders once or twice a year. And those medications will have to t make everyone healthy for the next six to nine months until we get our next order. So the, they need a pharmacy technician who is really detail oriented and can manage numbers very well. So definitely, um, and if you, when you are 18 and you want to come work down here, um, you can either get my info from Kelly or um, probably be the best way, right Kelly? Yep. And then, so, yeah, awesome the question. Part of that question was, do you have cars that drive between these buildings? Can you guys see any cars moving in the pictures? I don't know how high resolution the camera image is. I'm going to hop back on, on camera so I can see you guys. Uh oh, oh, hey, Elaine. I got an error message on the screen. All right, you guys, see me it. again. Yeah. Um, we have a couple cars, um, but we don't get to personally own or operate them. They're just for using for work. Uh, but the shuttles department does have a taxi line number you can call. And if the weather is really bad or you have heavy loads, they will come and pick you up. For the most part, we walk. Um, we have bikes here that we can rent. Um, they also have snow machines down here, so or snowmobiles. So uh, if you need that for your job and you have the safety training to take one, you can use that for your job too. Cool. Off to the so, far right, there's yeah. a big tank. What is that? Or like a big, that, yeah. The one that's blue on top. Uh, it says, am I in the way of it? It's circular and white. That one? Yep. Uh, that is one of our, I think we have three fuel tanks. So 
the ship that's in our harbor right now is bringing all of our groceries and supplies. We're going to get a separate ship that is going to bring down our gasoline and diesel for the next several years. Uh, and they will put them in these big drums. So, and I guess we should maybe thank Alaska for that because that might be some of our very own gasoline coming down from Alaska to Antarctica. The next question is, do you have neighborhoods or where do you live there? So we have dorms. They might be kind of hard to see in the picture, but they are brown buildings that are kind of lined up in a row. I think you can see four of them behind the blue building in the center of town. Um, some people also live in dorms in the blue 155 building. It's almost like going to summer camp. You come down here with two suitcases and that's all you have for the next six months. Although your family can t mail you packages, um, it might take anywhere from two weeks to four months for your mail to get here, depending on how the planes are running. Um, we live in dorms. We have a roommate or a couple. I have one roommate. Um, some people have up to three roommates, so that's four people living in one dorm. Um, we have to be very respectful and try to really live and work together as a community. Um, but I have to say, I have been down here for four months and I love the community here. Everyone is so friendly. Everyone is very diverse. And I love just sitting in the dining hall and meeting people from all 50 states and other countries. I have met people, scientists from China, uh, Russia, Britain, um, New Zealand, Australia. I met tons of people from Alaska. Um, I think because we like cold weather, Alaskans tend to end up here a lot. So, another yep, question, that's it. Another question for you uh, is, um, do you have playgrounds or what do you do for fun? There is so much to do here for fun. Um, we don't have any playgrounds that I can think of, but we, uh, we love to go for hikes. We have probably about six to a dozen hikes, depending on the weather, that we would be allowed to go do. Sometimes we are allowed out on the sea ice to go cross-country ski and to go see wildlife. There are seals and penguins out on the ice. Right now, the ice is kind of melted and it's not safe for us to travel out there, but I like to do a lot of hiking down here. Um, we have three gyms down here with a rock wall, uh, basketball courts, tennis courts, um, and people tend to make their own fun. So if there's something that interests people, like if they're really into working out or if they're really into arts and crafts or they're really into photography, they'll start a club. So there are so many clubs down here that I didn't even get the chance to get involved with all of them. Awesome. Do you celebrate the Chinese Lunar New Year? I'll have to ask Elaine that one because I don't think I'm going to be here for it. Do we celebrate the Chinese Lunar New Year? There will probably be a small party in a dorm lounge for the people who like to observe that back home because we do have a Chinese uh, population on station. But um... uh oh, well, let's let's get the questions from this room to me while they're fixing their connection. They lost it. What was your question? <laughs> Good question. So we get candy and Girl Scout cookies. Okay. Anybody else in here have a question? While we're waiting to see if they reconnect. And their price was that's a good question. Uh oh, how do I talk to my mouse? Oh, it's like a yes. So how do I get it back on yeah, here? You're upside right here. That's like your screen here. Oh. So how do I We just disconnect from this for a minute. Yeah, okay. Thank you. 
Oh, Valdez. Oh, watch out. Entire body out of the way. Hi, Valdez. We're unmuting you for a minute so you can say hi while we're waiting. Hey. Okay, we're going to mute Valdez again. Yep, I can hear them. All right, you're back. Sorry about that. Uh, our power cord quit for a minute, but we're back online. Um, I think I had wrapped up the last question. Were there any other questions people had? We have lots of questions. What do you do with your trash? Awesome. What do I do with my, oh, with our trash? That's an awesome question. And actually, I'm going to move over so you guys can maybe see the vessel. Um, I don't know if you can see the gray cranes out like there-ish. But that vessel that came in with all of our supplies for the next year takes out our trash when it leaves. Um, so nothing stays in Antarctica. Um, we make huge efforts to keep this place as clean as we found it. So all of our trash gets packed up in shipping containers, goes back all the way to the U.S. Um, I think we recycle, is it 68% of what we send back to the U.S. is recycled. Uh, we also resale stuff occasionally if it can be reused. Um, and then we make sure to really sort our trash so that as little as possible ends up in landfills after we're done. Awesome. Do you guys get any candy or Girl Scout cookies down there? I haven't seen any Girl Scout cookies, and I think it's just because the timing. Yes, if you guys want to send any Girl Scout cookies, I will send Kelly an address. Um, but candy does end up down here because it's very hard for us to get fresh fruits and vegetables. So that for us is a huge treat when we see fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, but candy ship very well. And actually, we have amazing bakers that work in our kitchens right now. I think the baked goods have been better than the right regular meals so awesome how about animals do you have wild animals that wander into town and how's the fishing we do occasionally have wild animals that wander into town um a couple couple days ago i saw some adeli penguins you'll have to look up a picture of them they are comical and they wander into town they have no natural land predators so they have very little fear of us and they will just walk through town and when it suits them they'll walk back into the ocean uh, where the penguins are allowed to fish but we are not allowed to fish we do have fish in these waters um, most of what is close to McMurdo is kind of smallish and the seals enjoy eating them we see lots of Waddell seals um, and the penguins enjoy eating them and then about this time of year we start getting whales that we will see right off these waters I can be on a mountain and watch whales in the ocean, which is so super cool. Uh, we get orcas and minke whales. Um, other parts of Antarctica might also see humpback whales, I believe. Um, and then if you head off the coasts of Antarctica into the Antarctic Ocean, um, I believe there is some good commercial fishing between Antarctica and uh, Australia, New Zealand, and Chile, which are the southernmost countries ringing Antarctica. Uh, but we living in Antarctica are not allowed to fish. Awesome. How about dogs and cats? Do you get to bring your dogs and cats? No, we don't get to bring our dogs and cats. Although, uh, if you remember my picture from the South Pole, um, I had my dog with me. I made a 2D cutout of timber, my dog back home. I nicknamed the cutout Flat Timber because Flat Timber travels to me when real timber can't. So I very much miss having my dog with me. Other people miss their cats. We are also not allowed to bring our families with us to Antarctica. You have to have a job to be here. Um, so if your job is only during the summer months, then you have to go home for the winter months and you can't bring your family, you can't bring your pets, you can't bring your kids. So that's one thing that most of us working here really miss. Oh, and Elaine says I should also tell you about the picture where I'm having fun with all the women. They had a race here where um, we hooked up two sleds like sled dogs and one woman got to ride in the sled and we had a race. Um, my team did not win, 
but we were all women and we won the most fun award. So that was an award worth winning. Yeah. Awesome. Let's see if we have other questions. How many people live here in the winter? How many people live here during the winter? Maybe Elaine. Elaine says that about 150 people live in McMurdo during the winter. And winter is from about April till September. Um, the other U.S. stations down here are even smaller than that. I think there are about 40 people that winter over at Palmer and... Elaine says 50 will winter over at the South Pole and only 16 people will winter over at Palmer Station. What is your question? How do we sleep? Okay. So we had a question about how do you sleep? Do you have any trouble sleeping there? Uh, the question is how do we sleep down here? Um, I have lived in Alaska for about seven years now and I'm kind of used to sleeping when it's light out but some people it's their first time seeing 24 hours of daylight and they really struggle. It's also hard because we have roommates, we have to be quiet, some of us work crazy hours so sleep is something that definitely working in the medical clinic we help people out, we teach them healthy habits like using um, the dark curtains, using a sleep mask, taking melatonin as a supplement so so, yep, some people really do struggle with sleeping down here. All right, we have about five more minutes. I know the Wasilla Public Library closes at um, six. So we have to be done by then. Um, any other questions okay. on from the other locations? Go ahead and type them in, and we'll see what we have here. Yeah. Oh, what time is it for you? It is, what time is it? That was what their question is. So it's almost four o'clock in the afternoon here. Um, but the cool thing is that it's Thursday. And I think it's Wednesday back where you guys are. It is. So it's tomorrow here. <laughs> How much sunlight? Any other questions? Is that the question? Sunlight? Uh, yep, we have a few other questions. Uh, one is, do you ever have... There's going to be a helicopter taking off behind me in a minute, which you guys might get to see. I can hear it. They'll probably sling over the ice, right? Rebecca? I can take questions while that's spooling up. Okay. Um, we had a question here. Are the positions there paid positions or volunteer positions? No, nope. everyone down here is paid to be here. Um, some people make more than they would in the States. I think most of us make a little bit less, but when you work down here, you don't have to pay for your housing and you don't have to pay for your food, which more than makes up for it because I think I eat a lot here. <laughs> we had a comment that it's really cool how many women are doing science in Antarctica. So that's awesome. It is so cool how many women are doing science down here, for sure. Where do you go to the bathroom? So the question is, where do you go to the bathroom? Which um, <laughs> Carol told me I was gonna get that question. Um, for the most part, we all have normal toilets. Although dealing with waste water and sewers is a whole job down here because we can't just dump stuff into the oceans um, or leave it in McMurdo. We need to keep this place clean, study for science and for future generations. Um, so they do make sure that we treat the water and we're not dumping our waste. We go in normal bathrooms, except for the field camps, which are people who are off in remote locations studying um, ice and mountains and whatnot. They do have to go into honey buckets, you know, five gallon pails and bring that back into town with them so that we can treat it um, and either ship it back to the States or put the clean water back in the seawater. Do you guys have TV there? Yes, we do have TV, although it's not very good. Um, they say we have 24 channels. I think most of them are just information about the weather and the flight schedule and things that we need to know. Uh, I think there's only about four channels I watch regularly because I don't watch sports. Uh, we watch a lot of movies though. Um, and we do have internet down here, but it's also not very good. Think about if you had one cell phone 
and a thousand people had to share it. That's about how much internet we have. Um, internet, TV. Uh, we do have a radio channel down here, which is kind of cool. Lots of movies. Oh, and we can call home. We do have um, re yeah, regular telephones, landline phones, and people who are off in the remote field sites studying science or whatnot, um, they have satellite phones that they're able to use to call back into town. Cool. Can you tell us a little more about what the remote locations look like? Sure. Um, so the question is, what do field camps look like? Um, so how big do you think the biggest one is, Elaine? So Elaine's, oh yeah. So Elaine says that the biggest one probably has about 75 people. The smallest one, maybe two, maybe the smallest field camp. Um, they live in tents and then they set up big tents that they'll have their kitchen um, and maybe some of their other science equipment set up in there. Um, but in general, they're living out of tents um, there will have maybe a helicopter or a small Cessna type aircraft deliver supplies to them and take them all out at the end of the season. And they will have a satellite phone. Uh, I don't believe they have any internet over there. Um, in McMurdo, do you guys have Netflix? No, we have no Netflix. <laughs> I haven't seen any movie that's been released <laughs> since October. Um, I haven't seen any primetime TV does not really exist down here. Uh, I occasionally read the newspaper, but we don't really get a lot of, we have two news channels actually. But yeah, we don't get any, no internet streaming, no gaming, no downloading music. So uh, you spend more time hanging out with other people on station. I've met a lot of people. I've learned new activities. I've learned new crafts. There's still a lot to do here, just not the modern stuff. Do you guys have to watch the movies on DVD? Do you have movies on DVD? Yep. Yeah, we have DVDs and Blu-rays down here. I brought my own little Blu-ray player with me that plugs into my laptop. But uh, there's no internet in the dorms either, so... Um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of gather in lounges maybe to watch DVDs together, but I can't stream anything while I'm in my dorm. Do you have blankets and pillows and how do you stay warm? The dorms are actually pretty toasty. I can't really complain. Um, the dorms are furnished. So when I get down here, there's already a bed with blankets and pillows already made up for me. Um, I brought just my clothes, uh, my comforts of home, you know, the warm weather gear I like to wear. Um, I brought some of my favorite snacks with me. Um, and as far as how we stay warm, um, when we come down, the NSF, the National Science Foundation, provides us with all of this warm weather clothing that we are required to wear for certain outdoor activities. All right, what is your question? I don't think they have any of those internet things. Do you have schools? Are there any kids there? No, you have to be 18 to come down here. Um, there's no schools, um, but if you want to learn something, here is an awesome place to do it. Uh, they give lectures a couple times a week. On Sunday, they have a big science lecture. On Wednesday, they'll have a very technical science lecture. And then a couple times a week, people will just give talks about what interests them. So I went to a talk about people who, you know, cool vacations they've taken, different parts of the world that they've traveled, um, people talking about their jobs and what kind of jobs that they do back in the U.S. Um, so you definitely learn a lot here, but there's no schools. All right, and I think the last question is, do you guys have earthquakes or any other kinds of natural disasters you need to be worried about? That's an awesome question. So Elaine and Carol, this is the last question and it was about, do we have earthquakes or any natural disasters? Carol is the weather person, anything you wanted to contribute? So Carol says that there was a earthquake that was strong enough we could feel at McMurdo about two or three years ago. Um, we are on a volcanic island. There are actually um, one active volcano about 20 miles away. 
20 miles away um, that we can see on a clear day. Unfortunately, it's not clear today, so we can't see it. There are three other dormant volcanoes on Ross Island, which is a small island off the coast of mainland Antarctica where we're living. Um, so we do need to worry about the volcano. Uh, we do need to worry about earthquakes, but most of our concerns have to do with wind, blizzards, and snow, and cold. All right, well, I think we have to wrap up. Thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna let the kids from Anchorage say thank you, and then we'll turn Valdez on if you guys wanna say a thank you as well. You guys wanna say thank you? Awesome, I'm so glad this worked out. It was a pleasure talking to all of you guys. Um, and yeah, I hope that now you know that women work in Antarctica and maybe think about coming down someday and joining us. We'd love to have you down here. All gonna say. All right, thing. Valdez is unmuted. Thank you. Thank you, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you guys are so welcome. <laughs> All right, we actually have one last question from Anchorage. And that is, do you yes, guys have question. windows in your houses that you live in there? Yep. I'm lucky I'm on the outside and I do have a window in my dorm and that's the fastest way for me to tell the weather in the morning. Although in the hospital where I work, there's no windows because some of these buildings are really old and some buildings are easier to keep warm if they don't have windows in them. But most of us have windows. We like seeing Antarctica just as much as I'm sure you all did. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thank you Valdez for joining us and um, Juno as well. Um, Juno, did you want to be unmuted here for a second so you can say anything? Let's see. Oops. I don't know if Juno's going to unmute. They're not working. All right, I think I unmuted Juno if you guys want to say anything at the end. Well, Kelly, I didn't know Juno was on this call. I would love to visit Juno someday. I've only yeah. taken the ferry through port there before. Yep, we got a few added um, yesterday and this morning. So another location. I know some awesome. people lost their connection, so they want to say thank you as well. I got a text from my friend there. Um, and thank you so much for doing awesome. that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you all. Have a good night or whatever time it is there. Kelly, I'm sure we'll be talking. Sounds good. Thanks so much. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs>